Hello, my entrepreneurial colleagues. I'm so excited to introduce you to Shelly Rose Charvet, who is a fellow rock star professional speaker. Her area of expertise is influence and persuasion. And I know so many little QT conversations I've had with various folks in this group is that you're, you're concerned or hesitant to seem too persuasive, which I think a lot of people think is pushy. And you know, I know Shelly has some amazing suggestions to help think about as an entrepreneur how to influence and persuade in, persuade in a really healthy way that gets you business, moves your business forward, and feels authentic to you. Shelly, thank you, A, first of all, so much for this conversation. Oh, and welcome. what advice do you have for these amazing entrepreneurs? You know, I'm going to talk a little bit about the golden rule and what's wrong with the golden rule and every entrepreneur needs to think about this in my opinion mm -hmm. the golden rule has always said do unto others as you would have done to you well in communication that doesn't work uh, yeah. so i'd like to introduce the platinum rule is do unto others as they would have done to them mm -hmm. and what i teach when i'm teaching people to have more influence and have a better impact is how to go to someone else's bus stop you see what most people do and and it's even worse for the most successful people is they use the same strategies they use to convince themselves of something mm. to convince other people and i believe instead of doing that you need to go to their bus stop like what's important to them mm -hmm. what do they want how do they think how do they make decisions and so all of my work around words that change minds is about understanding what are the triggers that motivate other people? So like you may be convinced your products and services are great, but until you find out how your other, how your potential clients uh, think about things, you can't position things because you're just throwing your stuff at them. Yeah. So do unto others as they would have done unto them. Can I give you a couple of examples? Yes, please. Okay, so most people are taught when they're taught to sell and market, Think about the benefits that your products offer. Well, you know what? Not everybody's looking for a benefit. Mm. Some people are looking for a way out of a problem. Mm. And if you use benefits oriented language, this is what you get. We have this, here's the advantage. When somebody's trying to, as we call it, get away from a problem and they need to hear this away from language, solve this problem, never have this again. Don't worry about this. I did a lot of work for the Canadian Automobile Association uh, quite a few years ago, and their big sales problem was that if people didn't use the services, they didn't tend to renew. And I took them down to one of, the, one of their own offices and had them listen to the language of everybody signing up. And people in the context of travel by car only become members of the CAA to avoid or fix the problem. Well, I don't want to break down and have to pay a fortune for a tow. So the language they needed to use to promote all their services is this away from language. Uh, don't worry about, um, you know, use one of our triptychs so that you don't get lost. Uh, we can book your hotels for you so you don't have to worry about where you're going to stay. So it's really important for entrepreneurs to figure out, do their clients want to gain a benefit or do they want to get rid of a problem? and have their language match. That's two of the motivation triggers that I teach people to figure out other people's bus stop. And, and Shelly, what I so value about what you shared as well is that key to understanding which of those approaches are going to work is you have to listen to your customers. And right. you know, this is something we talk a lot about in this community is your customers will tell you what your product or services that they need to buy or what they're willing to pay or what pain points you're solving and, and they'll, they will give you the words in which to use even in your marketing. <laughs> but we have to be paying attention to that. And even That's if they're not our customer yet, our potential customers are still telling us that information. So I really, really value that because it, right. we find the right I'm word. Sorry, I'm interrupting here. No, it's all I'm good. So the the I love it. I'm interrupting is we're always taught to listen by people who are experts in communication. But I think we need to go even further. What are you listening for? Mm. And there's two things you can, like out of, out of all the things you can listen for, they're really important. I e what is important to your client? What do they keep repeating and stressing? What do they value? And then the second piece is, are they moving towards what they want? Are they wanting a benefit? Or are they trying to get away from a problem? Mm. If you're listening for those three things, 
you will have already one of the magic keys for the platinum rule, unlike the golden rule. So do unto others as they will have done to them. Yeah, I love it. Any other last tips you could share with folks, who, particularly those who feel like, you know, I just am hesitant to try to cultivate new customer relationships because, well, maybe they'll find me pushy or I don't know what, what the first step is. You know, what, what, um, how do we use words that change minds to be able to shift somebody who is a very, very cold lead into somebody who may want to continue the conversation with us at some point? Can you, do you have any strategies on that you can share? Right. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you and then demo it. Okay. So Love it. the very first thing to do is to figure out how to go to their bus stop. So like you're looking down the road, the person's at that other bus stop. So you said they're cold. So if someone is cold, you want to go there. So, but in a way that's nice and uh, informative, like when I go to networking meetings, I can pick out the people that have decided to network me to death. And I kind of, you know, they'll chase you around the room trying to give you their card. <laughs> Please don't go around giving people your card, only if they ask for it. Here's what to do instead. Yeah. So ask people, you know, introduce yourself and ask them about themselves. And then, you know, ask them what they love about their business. Mm. Ask them what are their, big, big, uh, their, their biggest challenges. And you can do that after a couple of sentences. You can say, you know, hi, my name is, and, and you meet them, and what's your name? And tell me a little bit about, uh, about what you do really open questions you go well what do you what do you like about your business what's the challenge for you you know and people will talk and you don't have to say anything you don't close a sale in the first meeting you just create rapport right mm -hmm. and because you know most of the sales that i make are with large corporations i also have individuals who take my uh online trainings etc i'm not trying to sell anybody anything i'm trying to find out who they are and get to know them as a person and then they usually tell me what they're looking for. And, yeah. and over time, you develop a reputation and people come to you. Like I have people who come to me now, can you help me with this influencing problem? Mm -hmm. Because I've made uh, my business networking and my business is getting to know people. Mm -hmm. And so stop thinking about sales. Maybe your people will be really happy to hear that. Get mm -hmm. to know people and, and make it your business to be of help. Like I refer people to all kinds of other people mm -hmm. if I can't help them. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Like we're here to be of service to other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. And I think that does fit so much with the community of people that I have the privilege of working with and, and being part of uh, that entrepreneurial group. And it, because really these are very heart-based mission-based folks who are, who have this passion for doing great work. And it's often the sales marketing business side is not part of their education. And so they have it in their head that um, that I can't make it in business or it's going to be harder for me, right? That's the word that goes through their mind. And what I think the beautiful thing about so much of what you're sharing is, is some of these techniques around how we work with others is also how we persuade ourselves that there may be, in fact, another, you know, another way of looking at ourselves as an entrepreneur. So I could see right. ourselves needing to use that same metaphor of, Go to where you are in your bus stop. Like, where's your, your current location in your entrepreneurship journey? And understand that and accept it and ask questions. I, you know, I can, and this is the coach in me, I guess. Ask questions about, you know, what, is, what, what do you like about your business? What are, you, what are some of your challenges? And what would be different if, if it weren't like that? And, and what would be helpful? And what do you already know? Um, so if maybe if we practice it more, these, you know, these things around words that change minds within ourselves, maybe it would also make it easier to go and have those conversations with other people. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I think having the objective of getting to know people uh, when you first meet them is a much better objective than having, I got to sell this person something. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much in alignment with an abundance versus scarcity mentality. And that's maybe who you see chasing people around the room. Oh my God, I got to close a sale today. That's right. I'm in this networking group to get business. Oh, it's you. Ah! Yeah. But the yeah. other thing is people need to apply that also to their marketing materials. You see, mm. nobody goes on a website or hardly anybody goes on a website first time and makes a purchase. Yeah. So again, 
think about your customers buying process. How many mm -hmm. steps are there in this buying process? Mm -hmm. Well, first one, uh, sometimes the first, the very first step in somebody's buying process is, oh, I realize I have a problem or a need. Uh, and then they say, okay, what's out there? And they do a search. Mm. They're not ready to buy. They're just ready to inform themselves. So like, if you can figure out what are the steps, and, and this is why you know, corporations hire me. Like, what are the steps in a particular field that people go through mm -hmm. uh, when they're gonna buy something? It's not a sales process, it's a buying process. Mm. And so when they get to the information stage, they're not ready to buy, they're, they're just looking at what's out there, what else is out there? Mm -hmm. What are other people saying about this? So if that is the point when your people go to your website, you need to answer that phase mm -hmm. and give them an invitation to go to the next phase, which might be, uh, I need to develop some criteria to make a choice. Well, maybe you can offer a uh, co consultation to help them figure out what's really important. Right. So it's really kind of important for them to figure out at what phase in the customer's buying cycle are they likely to come on your website? So mm -hmm. how can I help them with that phase and help them move to the next step in their mm -hmm. buying cycle? I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh, this was awesome. And of course we could talk all day, but you know, you've got, you've got a meeting to get to and we've got a couple things going on, but what I am going to suggest to folks is that they pick up your book because it is fabulous oh, and it would it's, be lovely. Yes. Could you hold it up for us so that Here they know what, are, right. Yeah. Words that change minds on Amazon. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, my pleasure. And it's in the third edition, everyone. So I just wanted you to hold it up so people could see what the cover looks like right now and buy the right one. And, uh, and if your first language, because I know lots of the entrepreneurs in this community aren't necessarily English speaking first, you have it in how many languages? It's out in 15 languages. The third edition is only out in English, but it's coming out in some of the other languages again soon as well. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Shelly. And we will make sure that folks know how to reach you. But uh, Shelly, you're just such a delight. And, and I, I feel, I mean, I didn't feel too stressed about, about selling before this conversation and persuading people, but I feel even more at ease um, with uh, some of the things that you're sharing because it just feels authentic and it feels comfortable. So thank you so much for sharing the evidence behind how we can get there. Great. Thank you. This is a Fun conversation. Thanks, yeah, Sarah. For sure. All right. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks again, Shelly.